So, you want to build a PC. Should you wait for DDR5 or build one with DDR4? Well, you've come to the right place. Let's get into it. So, DDR4 and DDR5. I just want to get this thing cleared first. They will not be backwards compatible. I heard some people saying, oh, DDR5 is going to be backwards compatible with DDR4. No, it won't be. It's the same with every RAM uh, kind of, uh, you know, generation. There you go, found the word. Every RAM generation. Uh, DDR3, DDR4, not compatible. DDR2, DDR3, not compatible. DDR, DDR2, not compatible. It's going to be the same thing with DDR4 and DDR5. And uh, basically, yeah, that's that, that's that gone. Now, what you want to hear, what you want to hear, okay? You, you there. I, I, I know I know you're here for this. What's the difference between DDR4 and DDR5 on a performance level? Well, let's begin with the performance. Uh, bandwidth, you know. Bandwidth is essentially how much information can come in and out of the uh, RAM stick, okay? So, per pin, DDR4 can pull 3.2 gigabits per second. Meanwhile, DDR5 should be able to pull about 6.4 gigabits per second. That's double the amount of information off of one pin. So, but at first, um, I will, I'm guessing it'll pull about like 5 gigabits per second, maybe 4.6 gigabits per second, uh, because manufacturing gets better as the uh, as life of the RAM kind of continues longer. For example, DDR4, when it first came out, you can buy 1600 megahertz sticks. 1600 megahertz! Now the lowest you can buy is 2133 megahertz, which is substantially higher. <laughs> and it's uh, better, but it's a uh, low performance RAM now. It's the, the lowest speed you can get now. See? The manufacturing of RAM got better. So uh, basically why uh, there's a double increase is not not really because of uh, physical changes but because of changes in speed. DDR4 runs at 1600 to 3200 megahertz which is pretty good. Meanwhile the official spec of DDR5 is 3200 to 6400 which is double the speed. Now the official spec for DDR4 is 3200, but you will see like higher, higher stuff like 3600. You can even get like 5000 megahertz kit, kits now, which is, it's really good. Which means that the manufacturing process of DDR4 got much better. And with DDR5, you will probably start with only like 3200 megahertz. You might find a few kits that are 3600 megahertz. Maybe some a bit more, but you won't find any like high performance DDR5 kits at the start. So there will be less of a difference between DDR4 and DDR5 uh, at the beginning of the DDR5 lifespan. So uh, what I think will happen though with the uh, frequencies is that later on it's also going to get higher for DDR5. Same thing that happened with DDR4 you'll probably be able to get high performance RAM kits that go higher, like 8,000 megahertz, I'd say, would be a, kind of a limit. Who knows? Uh, next, power management. The DDR4 power management chip is on the motherboard. Uh, the motherboard supplies power to the RAM. I don't think it's a chip. I think it's just the chipset itself. Uh, I'm not sure about how the power management for DDR4 really works. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I do know that it is on the motherboard and that for example if one stick of RAM needs more power than the others to function at the same speed the motherboard is going to have to give more power to all the, all the RAM sticks let's say you have eight RAM sticks uh, on like an x99 board that means you'll be supplying eight times that higher power level which is pretty wasteful but with DDR5 what you get is a chip on the RAM stick for power management 
This chip is called a PMIC, Power Management Integrated Circuit, which means it's more efficient because one RAM stick can just pull more power if it needs it, while the other RAM sticks don't pull more power, which means you don't waste any power. Because let's say, again, that same system with the eight sticks of RAM, and you have, let's say, three sticks that are lower quality and need more power for the same speed. Those three sticks will get powered individually with more power, while the rest stay at, say, level, I guess you could, uh, you could say. Now, uh, the next thing I want to talk about is channel architecture. This is basically how much channels uh, there are on a stick of RAM and on the motherboard as well. Basically, uh, with DDR4, you have one stick, one channel. And you might see motherboards with two sticks for two channels or four sticks or four slots, sorry, four slots for uh, two channels, but two sticks per channel. Sometimes you can have quad channel, which is eight slots, and you'd have multiple uh, multiple RAM sticks in there, like eight, eight RAM sticks. The reason for uh, channels, like many channels, is just to pull more data. One channel is only a able to uh, transport a set amount of data uh, per second, and the CPU would usually want more. Sometimes you will find a RAM bottleneck if you're doing like uh, workstation things. I, I'm i not really too sure about gaming, but you will find like a RAM bottleneck uh, when you're doing workstation stuff. I'm not sure what people do use, but it's what I've heard from a lot of people who do use workstations. And um, so DDR5 will have double, it'll have two channels per RAM stick, which is it's amazing, it's great. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is burst length. Burst length is, uh, well, DDR4, let's, I'm just gonna, just gonna get into it with the numbers, okay? DDR4, it has eight, and DDR5 is 16. The burst length is 16, not has. <laughs> I don't, I just sometimes don't English, but uh, basically, burst length, DDR4, eight, DDR5, 16. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's uh, it's not something you hear a lot about RAM because uh, you don't really hear. I the first time I heard it was last week, so um, basically, uh, so you know the RAM times you see on the board. For example, 18, 20, 20, 22 uh, RAM time is just just period out of my head. What you'd get with uh, the second number that is how long a channel is open for. In this case, it's 20, so 18, 20, 20, 22. You would have 20 as the amount of time the channel is open for, which is basically like a, a part of a RAM stick, how long it's open for, how long the RAM stick kind of scans for that bit. Basically, uh, DDR4 has a burst length of eight, which means it can scan eight, eight rows or no, eight columns and it can scan, I think, eight bits. Meanwhile, DDR5 can scan double the amount of bits, meaning if there is if there's two pieces of, of information that need to go out from the same chip, and they're on like different like um, ID, I guess you can call it, different ID, the DDR5 RAM has a higher chance of getting to it within one round, uh, other than DDR4, DDR4, has half the burst length, birth, burst length. Uh, it's something I don't know too much about. So, so memory capacity is next. DDR5 will have up to four times the data density than DDR4. For example, DDR4 can have 16 gigabits per die and can fit up to 16 dies on uh, on a stick on two sides of the stick. That means if you multiply uh, 16 by 16, you get 256 gigabit. That means 32 gigabytes. So a, a DDR4 RAM stick can hold up to 32 gigabytes. Meanwhile, DDR5 has 64 gigabits per die and 16 dies, which is 1024 gigabit, 
which is 128 gigabytes on a single stick. That is, that is mind blowing. 120 gigs per stick. That's a lot. Um, so DDR5 is gonna be pretty good. And uh, of course, it'll take time to get to that density because the manufacturing process, as I've already told you, will get better over time. So that's really all I have to say. Um, when, actually, when will DDR5 come out is something I need to cover as well. It will probably come out with either Intel's 12th gen or AMD's Zen 4. We don't have too much information about it, but Intel's 12th gen should be able to support DDR5 and it's coming out later this year. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something. This was a pretty informational video. It's pretty as much it's more on the boring side, but I find that informational videos can uh, be very educational for people who don't know too much about RAM or just are looking for more information about RAM. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.